Today on the Philly Toll Podcast, we discuss another, I repeat, another victory Monday. That is six in a row. The only team still undefeated. And it's a little bit more sweeter because the Dallas Cowboy fans are crying. Today, we're going to talk about the game, but more importantly, where we rank in the NFL. I believe this is the best team in the NFL. And oh, by the way, just got to say this. Jordan Malata is the GOAT. Listen where he went to college. Jordan Malata. Jeff Stoutland University. Jordan Mailata. Jeff Stoutland University. Jordan Mailata. Jeff Stoutland University. Jordan Mailata. Jeff Stoutland University. This is Philly Talk with Philly Mike. Talking sixes in the bird game. That's our life. Competition, we ain't scared. Yeah, that's what we like. Win or lose, you know we showing up and we gon' fight. Uh, you see, we strive for the sky every day that go by. And every single week we scream and fly. Eagles fly. This is Philly Talk with Philly Mike. Yeah, this is Philly Talk with Philly Mike. Yeah. What is going on, everybody? I go by Philly Mike, and this is the Philly Tall Podcast. And today, we are talking about still being 6-0 and and the Cowboys making excuses all day. If you rock with your boy and love that we beat on the Cowboys, help me out. Hit that like button. It's free, and it goes a long way. Also, ding the bell so you know when these videos drop, trying to grow notification, gang. Like I've been telling you all last week, if you hate Dallas like I do and know we're going to win, hit it. Y'all hit it. Almost got a thousand on every video, and we took care of business. It got a little dicey, but we had a grown man drive to finish them off, to finish them off and rip their hearts out. Check the link in the description, a live chat where we talk Eagle news behind the YouTube scenes. It was going off Sunday night while the game was going on. But let's get into my main thought, and then we'll discuss a little bit of how much the Cowboy fans are crying on the internet. But this is my main thought. The fact of the matter is this. We didn't just beat the Cowboys. That's not the accomplishment. The accomplishment is we played six weeks of football and nobody beat us. 6-0 and ain't easy. Ask all the teams who were favorites and lost these last six weeks. I'm not just talking about Rodgers losing to the Jets, uh, Brady losing to the Steelers, Mahomes losing to the Colts. I'm not just talking about that. There's been numerous. The Niners got blew out by the Falcons by two touchdowns. Good teams. Every team has a slump. And we almost lost the Cardinals game. The Lions low-key almost came back. But good teams, the greatest teams, just finish. And even the best teams sometimes have a bad game. But in its totality, we have not had the bad game that costed us a win. It's as simple as that. Now, my main take was as soon as the clock hit zero, the Cowboy fans were going to come out and say, it's only Dak, I mean, it's only Cooper Rush. If Dak Prescott was there, blah, 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 blah. The Cowboy fans acting like Dak Prescott was a late scratch. Like you didn't know you were going into this game with Cooper Rush. They saying back up as if this was the first game. They forgot about the four weeks of winning and saying this is a formula that works. They also forgot that they swore they were going to beat us. I tried to tell y'all. I wrote tired because I'm tired of telling y'all. I tried to tell y'all. Not you. We all try to tell the Cowboy fans. Listen, if you came into it like, you know what? We might have got lucky them four games. And the Eagles are a better team. Blah, 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 blah. Then it will be different. But you didn't say you were lucky. You said your defense is one of the best defense in the game. The run game has been playing like one of the best run games in the game. And Cooper Rush takes care of the ball. That is what you hold, held your hat on. And Jalen Hurts is not a real blah, 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 blah. Guess what? No rushing touchdowns. Two, through the air. Both two wide receivers that maybe Diggs should have been sticking a little bit better than throwing his helmet. Devontae and AJ both got a touchdown. Now, Jalen Hurts only threw for 155 yards, but he made the plays. And let me say this. The RPO had Michael Parsons frozen. Michael Parsons is not a bad player, but we had a great game plan for him. Listen to this. The Eagles game plan for Michael Parsons was great. Lane Johnson was being Lane Johnson and forcing the issue. However, we were running at him in the right times, and we were freezing him with the RPO. It got a little crazy 
when Driscoll came in. But look at the stat. Next gen uh, stats on Michael Parsons. He had zero quarterback pressures on 10 pass rushes in the first half when Lane was there. When Driscoll was there, he had two quarterback pressures on five. So two out of five is pretty good. Now we ran the ball a lot in the second half, which minimized him being able to beat up on Driscoll. That was probably uh, something that Nick Sirianni and Shane Steichen wanted to do because of losing Lane Johnson, who's out with a concussion, should be good by the time the bye week's over. But at the end of the day, the game plan was masterful. The way we would run at him, RPO freeze him for half a second, and also chip him with whoever's there. A.J. Brown on that touchdown had him extra thinking. And the one play that Micah Parsons made, which was a pass breakup on Dallas Goddard, he was so not used to being neutralized that he flexed on Dallas Goddard because we neutralized him. But I will say the reason we neutralized him is because we game plan for him. But that led the other Cowboy pass rushers get to the quarterback, like Golston and uh, Armstrong. They did have four sacks on us, and they were making us change the way we want to play offense. We had to get the ball out of our hand fast. Jalen had to throw the ball away a couple times. So their defense played good. But we still did score 26. Would have been 27 if we kicked the extra point. It is what it is. Great game plan. I loved the play calling and the way we froze Micah Parsons this game. Now, I got to say this. There were times in the game that I was getting frustrated in the third quarter, defensively and offensively, right? I think that we see the lead, and we definitely call, I'm not saying more runs, because I, like I like the run game, but they're not, you don't really, you're not trying to hit the home run. I, 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 don't, I don't know how I want to say it, to be honest, but you can see the difference in the type of runs, the type of throws. Um, teams, do, teams do like to blitz us more in the second half. We haven't had the hot routes, the checks to match it. And on the defensive side, you knew the Cowboys were going to run the ball. I understand Jonathan Ginn is like this. They're down 20-3. to 20-3? to three? They got to throw the ball. No, they don't. No, they won't. Now, they did throw the ball in certain situations. No if, and, or buts. But they didn't want to throw the ball. They remember the Lions being down by 17 and sticking with the run. And they stuck with the run. And when we finally started to creep up, they hit us with a play action to one of their tight ends. You had to be better. It was the most predictable offense I've seen just do the same thing, and we couldn't stop it. Fletch got moved by Terrence Steele on one of the big Zeke run plays. Maybe the touchdown, I believe. Moved. Terrence Steele moved him. The run defense got to be better. The mix of play calling got to be better when you adjust. I think Gannon came out with a game plan, and he executed it perfectly. And then we went into halftime, and we changed our game plan because of the score. And we thought they were going to pass, but they didn't pass the ball. They didn't. And they got late. And we got flustered. And then they started playing tempo. And the Eagles started looking gassed because the drives were long. It's as simple as that. Now, I do want to talk about why I really believe the Eagles are one of the best teams in the NFL. The Eagles are third in the NFL behind the Chiefs and the Bills for total touchdowns. Listen. Field goals are cool. They, they increase the score. But to win in this league, you got to put as much points on the board as you can, and you got to score touchdowns when you're in the red zone. The Chiefs are first with 22. The Bills are second with 21, and the Eagles are third with 20. Here's the difference. Jalen Hurts, whether he's passing or rushing, is the catalyst of this offense, but he doesn't get credit for it. Oh, the Bills got 21 touchdowns and Josh Allen threw for like 18, 19, or 20. The Chiefs got 22 touchdowns and Mahone has 15, 16. Jalen Hurts and the Eagles have 20 touchdowns, but he only threw for six. He also rushed for six. He has 12. Mahomes has 15. Allen has 18. But let me also tell you this. Why was Miles Sanders getting big holes? Kenny G getting big holes. Boston Scott getting big holes. Why did we run for 130 yards? against the Cowboys, against some of these other teams, because the RPO and the threat of Jalen Hurts is so scary. I've watched Tank Lawrence. I've watched uh, Michael Parsons freeze and not be able to attack the ball carrier because they're that worried about one Jalen Hurts. That is a fact. That is a fact. The offensive line is tremendous. The running backs are doing their job, but Jalen Hurts just being there is a taunting 
appear, they're, they're, they, they change how they play. Simple and plain. So he's the catalyst, and we're with the best, the top three teams in the NFL with total touchdowns. Second half, we got to be better on both sides of the ball. That is something that Nick Sirianni will be asked every single week until he fix it, and I believe he will fix it. It's been six weeks. I'm going to not hold my breath, but he has to. I believe in the creativity of this offense and this coaching staff. So I'm going to put my mo- I'm going to put it on their side. Another thing that the Eagles are doing masterfully is we lead, I repeat, lead the NFL in turnover ratio. We don't just have 12 turnovers. We have a total of 14 turnovers. We have turned the ball over on opposing offenses 14 times, but the Eagles also gave it up twice. So you add your turnovers, you minus the turnovers you have on offense, and that is the turnover differential, and we rank first with plus 12. The second place guy is the Ravens and the Vikings with plus four. The third is the Bills and the Bucks with plus three. We are leading by eight. Sheesh. No joke. Not only do you take the ball away, your quarterback is li- living, living in the moment, understanding when I should take risk, when I should not take risk. That is a talent that people look over. A good, good a quarterback that comes out like Burrow week one. He's a gunslinger. He might throw you three touchdowns. But if he also throws three interceptions, did the touchdowns help you as much as the interceptions hurt you? Which one affected the game more? Three and three are the same number. But it depends on when they were, how they were, and how it affected the game. Jalen Hurts picked his points when to throw the ball, when to run the ball, when to throw it away. And just to, and how to control this game with his RPO freezing their defensive ends. I loved it. I loved it. He wanted to beat Dallas, so did Nick Sirianni, and they did it. Last but not least, the secondary continues to shine. Not only did they have three interceptions, they had 12 total pass deflections slash BB, PBUs. Now, an interception counts as the pick but it also gives you a tick for PBU, pass deflection, whatever. Now, one of them came from Hargrave, which was on the defensive line. Good to see a Hargrave sighting. But 11 of them came from the secondary. Now, you do got a minus three because two Garner Johnson picks and a Slay pick. That's still three picks, one pass deflection from your defensive line, and a total of eight other ones. Slay had a PBU. Bradbury had four. Edwards, Kaiser White. There's a play floating around. I wish I could pull it up right now because I don't want to go look through everything. Of Kaiser White quote tweeting it, saying, me versus your best wide receiver, sink or swim, I'm going to choose me. And he was matched up with CeeDee Lamb in the slot early in the game, 101, mano e mano, and he was on his hip with the PBU. Heck, Bradbury's first PBU turned into a uh, PBU slash interception from C.J. Garner Johnson. So I got to say this, for, for Rush being as bad as he is, right, and we talked about this on Battle Birds podcast, he ranks fourth in the NFL with aggressive, aggression, aggressive throws, meaning tight window throws, meaning throwing the ball to the receiver when the DB is on their hip at least a yard between on their hip and a yard away. I, am, I said, the link's going to be loud. The link's going to be crazy. He's going to try an aggressive throw, and it's going to be intercepted. Once he gets his first turnover, the avalanche falls down. A guy who played four games. No turnovers. Give me one in this environment, and it's going to all unravel. Well, he tried to be aggressive. That first, that first PBU that turned into interception wasn't the worst throw. Tight window. Boom, the avalanche. You tried it, and you failed. Against the Rams, against the Bengals, against the Giants and the Commanders, he did try tight window throws. Not many. They only had him throw the ball like 20 sometimes a game. But he tried some tight windows, and the PBUs, the picks, it all unraveled. We are sending this man out the league. This man is done. Dallas is done with him. (laughs) <laughs> we, we, we ruined another one. Case Keenum, they thought he was pretty good when he was on his win streak. We knocked him off his high horse. Same what we knocked Cooper Rush off his high horse. 
Let me know your thoughts in the comment section on everything. I love hearing from you, Eagle Nation. Every single video I did last week, and I said, hit that like button if you dislike Dallas. Y'all did it, and we proved us to be right. Once again, 6-0, get healthy. Like I said, Jordan Malata is a goat for saying this. Jordan Malata, Jeff Stoutland University. Jordan Malata, Jeff Stoutland University. Jordan Malata, Jeff Stoutland University. We on to the next. We'll talk about a lot of things that will be being brought up this offseason. This offseason. This bye week. Two weeks of Eagles football. This channel will bring you content all day, every day, 24-7. Live streams and regular videos. Hit the like button for your boy. It's free. And it helps me out. Subscribe. We're over 26K. And ding the bell so you could be a part of Notification Gang. And like I said, if you want to talk in the back of the back of the back of YouTube, check the link in the description. It is only for iPhones. We still working on it. But until next time, might as well play it. Keep that roots going, baby! Roots on three! One, two, three, roots! 6-0, oh, baby. We out.